Good morning. It's Steve from Southern Illinois again. This last week has brought tremendous changes. The garden is dead. <clears throat> Cleaned out the uh, zucchini plants and the okra and the tomatoes need to go, but I just haven't been able to bring myself to say goodbye. So, and Carol, you'll be pleased to know, let me shift this around here. I have my own little patch of sassafras here in my woods. Uh, and yeah, I don't, know, I don't have many mittens on my tree this year either. So, it's chilly here. Um, well, there she is. Vivian had threatened not to come outside with me today because uh, she said she's cold in the house. She doesn't need to be cold outside of the house. But there she is. So, uh, something strange happened to me this week. Okay, uh, a friend and I uh, met on the road. We were working on a project together at church and had trouble synchronizing our schedules. And uh, I was leaving just as he was coming. And so we stopped to talk in the middle of the road. Him and his pickup, and me and my little Prius. And um, yeah, we just stopped in the middle of the road and started talking about what needed to be done and what, what where we were in the project. But hey, this is country, okay? There was no traffic around. You know, this is what we do here. So we're, we're, we're sitting there talking to each other, and all of a sudden, three cars come around the corner behind him and slow to a stop. Well, that, that's kind of unusual around here. So, so we wrapped up our conversation in a hurry and, and started moving forward, but the lady in the, the, the first vehicle kind of waved at me and motioned to me to, to stop and talk to her. Uh, and she was driving this this um, this big SUV, all shiny and new, and she looked about half my age, and she was dressed to the nines. And and you know, I'm thinking, why does she want to talk to me? Um, but she looked anxious, and, and and she said, "Does this road go through?" And I'm I'm kind of caught off guard uh, does this road go through what does she mean and I said uh, do you mean does it lead out of town she said yeah yeah I said no <coughs> no you need the road next the next road over to to get out of town and she she looked anxious and I said you go to the stop sign and you turn right and and that and and she still looked anxious you know her face is clouded over and I said oh are you trying to get back to the highway? She said, yes, sunshine. Um, and I said, well then, no, this road doesn't go through. You need to go back the way you came. Clouds, signs of impending rain now. And I, I said, she said, I can't do that. The road's blocked off. There's been an accident. And the light dawned for me, okay. This is one of those unofficial detours where the, the police uh, tell you to take, to turn here because you can't go straight, but there's no signs to tell you where to go and she's going to end up in the middle of the country. So I said, oh, okay, now I understand. Yes, you can get there from here. Go to the stop sign, turn right one block, turn left, go about a mile, and any road to the left after that will take you back to the highway. She smiled a big sigh of relief and off she went. By now there are more than three cars lined up here in the road, but not a single other driver stopped to ask me for directions. As they passed I could see cell phones or I could see them looking down at their dashboard. Last week we talked about GPS, the GPS system, and how dependent we've become on it, despite the fact that we don't have a clue how it works, and despite the fact that we know that it has pitfalls and weaknesses and can be hacked and all that vulnerability, and yet it is integrated into our lives and we depend on it, often in ways that we don't even recognize. I suggested that that was an analogy to the dependence on the Holy Spirit that we Christians promote. 
But then how do we account for, how do I account for the times in my life when I'm like the lady in the SUV asking directions from a stranger, lost, confused, and anxious? To navigate, you need to know several things. You need to know where you are. That's what a GPS system does. Um, the GPS system gives us a location. Now that location is meaningless unless we have a map, but the GPS helps us to locate where we are on the map. You also need to know where you're going. GPS doesn't help us there, okay? You have to have a destination in mind to navigate. And you have to know how to get there from here. Maps are complicated things. There's numerous ways to get there from here. And so you need directions on which road to take, where, where to turn, what's the safe path. And it helps also if you uh, have notice of impending dangers and, and detours so you don't get caught off guard. <clears throat> Those are kind of the things that I think of as being necessary for navigation. So when we're talking about spiritual navigation, how do we handle that? Well, as a Christian, I look at the Bible and I find several tools in the Bible. Probably the most important is the law. The law is like a combination of a GPS system and a map. It shows us where the roads are, where it's safe to travel, and it lets us know whether we're on the road or off the road. But the, G the law won't get me from here to there. The law is as inadequate as a GPS system for helping me to navigate if that's the only thing I have. The Holy Spirit gives, it, gives us directions in real time. I think of it kind of like air traffic control for a pilot. You know, um, Flight 291, turn to heading XYZ. Okay, and I know pilots sometimes get tired of air traffic controllers telling them where to go and we as passengers like to, to uh, you know, make air traffic control for the confusion that happens uh, in the air sometimes. But let me tell you, when an emergency happens, air traffic control is where it's at. Air traffic control is where pilots turn to to find a safe haven in a storm or to find an emergency landing if something goes wrong with the airplane. Another tool I find in the Bible is prophecy. I think of that kind of like a weather forecast. It let, lets me know what developing dangers are up ahead, where hurricanes are, uh, where road construction is is happening. Yeah, weather. I'm talking about traffic traffic forecasts too. Okay, but you get the idea. And then there are the stories in the Bible. When I was in medical school. Uh, almost every class, one of our professors would tell us an anecdote from his experience as a doctor. Those weren't just entertainment. They weren't just to wake us up and keep us engaged. Every one of those stories had a lesson, a warning, a pearl, an encouragement. Now, when I look at these tools, there are times when I want to ignore some of them. There are times when the law gets really annoying. I get tired of being reminded again and again of how imperfect I am and getting told, get back on the road. It's kind of like the rumble strips in Missouri. Okay, You hit the rumble strip before you're even, even to the line at the edge of the road and, and, and it gets really annoying. But there are other tools that, you know, are kind of attractive to me. <clears throat> um, some people really like the law. I may find it annoying, but you know, some people really like to to know that they're right, and and that they're where where they should be. 
even more, we like to tell other people when they're not where they should be. But you know, whether we avoid some of the navigational tools that the Bible shows us, or whether we have an affinity to some and use them all the time, that underuse and overuse is just as hazardous to our navigation through life as ignoring GPS or ignoring maps or ignoring directions. Maybe that's why we end up like the lady in the SUV. Anxious, lost, confused asking directions of every stranger we meet. Maybe we need to pay attention to the tools that we're given and practice using them on a regular basis. Stay safe, my friends. Here in Southern Illinois, in the last week in the hospitals that I'm working with, uh, respiratory illnesses have kicked up. Some people are testing positive for flu. Some people are testing positive for COVID. The honeymoon's over again. And what we feared was happening, it looks like it is coming. Cold weather is bringing a resurgence of COVID on top of the usual flu season. So please, friends, stay safe. Be prudent. But above all, keep looking up. Have a good day, a good week, and I'll see you later.